American Go Association. I'm Chris Garlock, Managing Editor of the AGA eJournal, joined once again by Michael Redman, Nine Don Professional. Today, Michael's going to review another AlphaGo Zero versus AlphaGo Lee game, and this time, AlphaGo Lee takes white. As always, before we get started, I want to thank all our AGA members. If you'd like to support this content as well, please consider joining the American Go Association at usgo.org. So we've got another zero game. We've been uh, looking to get back to these for a while. But, uh, what's what's your what's your reason for choosing this particular one? Because I know uh, it's our second video, but this is actually game eleven. Do you want to just sort of run through how that works? Sure. Well, um, in our first video, I showed game number one, in which um, A. G. Lee um, had the black stones, and AlphaGo Zero had the white stones. Okay. Um, so I, in this case, I chose a game with which um, AlphaGo Zero had black, and um, so this is the um, the twenty block version of Zero, and so it's a bit different from the forty block. And in fact, it's pretty unique in the way, especially in the way it plays with black, because it um, it likes to play the three three points. Mm -hmm. And maybe the only very version of AlphaGo that I've seen that likes to play the three three points. But there's, um, I think there's some hidden uh, hidden liking of three three points um, in all of the versions, but they're they're not showing it in actual play. Mm -hmm. Like they like they generally play for the first move towards the corner. Um, but of course they like to dive into the three three point when the opponent is played first at the mm -hmm. start point. Mm -hmm. um, but so so uh, th this twenty block version of uh, AlphaGo Zero is pretty unique in the way it plays the opening um, with black, especially. Okay. And wanna, so that's something that's interesting. And do you want to sort of give us uh, the, the the big picture of this game before we dive into the details? Uh, well, just like the forty block version of AlphaGo Zero. Um, AlphaGo Zero in this version also, it just likes to run away with territory. So it, it's going to take a lot of territory and um, and then reduce White's Moyo, you might say. But it, it does it in a different way. And actually, um, the, the techniques, the opening strategy that's used by Zero, um, this, this Zero also, is very popular uh, among young professionals, some young mm -hmm. professionals. So um, this 20 block version also has a, had a has had a great effect on the way we play Go. And that's also something that I want to be talking about. Okay, let's take a look. So just to get into the game, uh, this combination of a 3-4 point and the 3-3 three, three point is uh, it's just an opening that um, this 20 block version of Zero really seems to like because I think it's playing it in every game that it has black in this series. Mm-hmm. But strangely, it, it didn't play it in the the self played uh, training run, huh. which is um, which is a set of twenty games that are supposed to be representative of his progress up to well, well um, superhuman level. Um, <laughs> in in hours, practically hours. Well, days maybe I think. Um, I yeah, but yeah, um, so. It didn't show, we didn't see any of this um, opening in that set of games. It doesn't mean it wasn't playing it in between the games that were published, of course. Right. Um, but it, it's a kind of a mystery. And then it plays this big shimari. So we're reminded of the master version, right. but of course it's it's not a um, direct relative. It's it's it started with no uh, human data at all. So it's, it's um, on its own, I guess it decided that this was a good move. Um, but it does sort of remind us of Master when it likes to play that move. And so White plays the Chinese opening. So we're seeing the, um, the A.G. Lee version. Uh, so this is the version that played Lee Sedol, mm -hmm. and it's playing the Chinese opening. And in the in the match against Lee Sedol, we didn't see it play this with White. And so I looked into that, and I found that um, that was because Lee Sedol would be playing a Kakari at A with the fifth move. Or something mm -hmm. like that. So, so there, um, the AG Lee version um, didn't have any chances to play the Chinese opening with white. And we might remember in some of the games it ended up with the Chinese opening with black. So right. it, it is an opening that I guess AG Lee likes, but it didn't get a chance to play it in the five game match against Lee at all. And so here we go. It dives into the three three point. And you know, 
Um, as I say in the SDF file, um, this 20 block version of zero really likes the 33 point. Like it, it, it will dive into the 33 point probably even more than the 40 block version. So it you, just so, dives in. So, so if Lisa Dahl had, had, had come up with this, uh, we might have had a whole different story, right? This, this 3 3 invasion. Um, never, never in a million there's years. There's no way. Right? Never, no never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so we get this Joseki, and we can see that um, AlphaGo Lee version is playing the old Joseki, um, which is still played now. But like uh, a lot of players at this point, when White plays the Hunnet, would instead be playing. Uh, let's just add a little variation. Would be playing the Knight's move here. This is the more popular move now, but this is still a valid variation. And um, and zero crawls once extra. This has become the standard sequence and then peeps here and sort of hurrying to peep here is um is sort of a trademark of this 20 block person it's something that the 20 block person likes to th it likes to peep here mm. and this is a kind of a probe if white answers it a it's just going to be a good exchange for black mm -hmm. so in that case black will have more potential when black later inv invades the left side um, but white in the game plays on the left side, so white's refusing to give black that ad potential advantage on the left side. Um, but there's this cut at A that's left behind. So there's the cut at A is something that black is going to be aiming at. In some cases, black will just cut at A. We're going to see that in the game variation. Black just cuts later in the game. Probably starting a fight right now is just going to be... Uh, there's, um, there's some good chances that black will just get beat up. So. It's not a good idea for Black to fight here immediately, probably. But Black's going to be looking at a good time to start a fight by cutting at A. Or Black could play at B, which would be a kind of a, an attempt at forcing White to connect at A. So that's what Black can do with this for now. Um, but it's not going to do it yet. It, it plays the Kakari here. And playing this Kakari to invade the, um, the Chinese opening is something that we don't see... Um, the 40 block version of Zero doing very much. Like it mm. likes the low Kakaris. It likes to play attachments. You remember that the master version in the self-played series, it also liked to play pretty strange to us moves, um, different moves. Right. Um, this is the move that humans played um, a lot before AlphaGo. So it, um, Zero is a little in, unusual in that it likes to play this high Kakari when compared to the other, other robots in general and especially when compared to the other versions of AlphaGo. But it has a special version of the Joseki, of course. It doesn't um, follow the Joseki that we recognize as the human Joseki. So this is where Zero diverges from what we would call the Joseki. This, I'll just to show you what the human Joseki is. Mm -hmm. uh, we play um, a nice little extension here, and Black is a bit cramped, but when Black uh, attaches underneath here, Black is going to have enough room to, to live. So this sequence to B, um, Black actually has a living shape on the side. Um, so this is pretty important to recognize. Um, just to clarify for some players who might not recognize this, these two points are inter interchangeable points. They're called mm -hmm. Mi. Um, if white plays one of those triangle points, black is just going to play the other. Black's going to have a living shape. So as long as you remember that, then you should have little trouble making a living shape. And the game, Black plays the attachment here. So this oh. is where, and this move itself has become um, pretty popular. It's, it's, it has become the standard way that a lot of people like to handle this. And it's a very fine difference. It's going to be a very similar shape in all, and the pros and cons are um, very subtle. So people who are used to playing this move, um, as far as I'm concerned, you can just go on playing this Joseki. Like it's, it's not a big difference, but this is the way that Zero likes to play. And when White plays, naturally, the Hane on top seems to be a very natural move. Black, Hane is under. So this is a Tesuji. Um, just pulling back would be bad. Um, it would be heavy because White would then play, uh, play down here. And there would be no satisfying way for Black to make life on the side. So that would be just not enough eye space. You can see that white's stones on both sides of that are on the second line, taking away black's eye space. So black plays a honey here, white connects, black connects. This is a very natural sequence. 
In fact, it's, it's a pretty simple sequence. Um, and if we see humans playing this, um, and we have uh, human pros playing this, it's pretty likely that this might happen. And it turns out that black also, um, it's a very similar shape to before. Mm -hmm. And again, um, these two points are pretty much mei, so it's, it's not going to die. Um, it's a bit more complicated as a life and death problem. And so for uh, Q players especially, it's, it's a bit um, treacherous, I would say. Yeah, you have to be careful because you can, you can especially die. You can when, die easily. You can die easily, especially when white plays this move, which is, as far as shape is concerned, this is the key point. Right. And um, this variation is a bit more tricky. We're going to see it happen in the game. And it's going to be, uh, some player, players might find it confusing. So this is one of the things you have to watch out for if you want to emulate AlphaGo and play this variation. So white forces with the Sargari and continues in the upper, left, upper right corner. So um, obviously white, um, just to clarify again, white is AlphaGo Lee. So it's the version that played Lee. And um, so that's the version that is famous for its, its uh, shoulder hit. There is a famous shoulder hit that um, AlphaGo Lee played against uh, Lee Sedol. Yes, um, shoulder hits hurt around the world. Right, so, so I guess, um, A.G. Lee sort of um, is proud of his shoulder hits and is showing us a shoulder hit here. Um, this is actually a position where I would probably want to play a Kakari from the upper side. So I'm sure. going to show that in a variation. Something like this. Um, oh, that was short. Yeah. Um, so this is the variation <laughs> I made. White builds on the upper side. Um, and this seems very natural. Uh, it looks like an even game to me. And White's but, got a really nice outside position, right? Yeah, and White can continue at some point with a move here, and right. it's going to spread into the center. Right. So this is uh, perfectly playable for White. Um, but um, with, in playing this move, A.G. Lee is going to spread into the center immediately, and it's not bothering so much about the side territory. So I guess this is a feasible way to play. And White jumps, and Black plays the attachment. Again, this attachment... Uh, well, the, playing the 3-3 three, three point as the first move in the corner is um, this version of Al AlphaGo Zero is the only version that plays that anyway. So, But I get the feeling that this attachment is also something that the 20 black version of Zero likes, but maybe other versions might lock, not, not like so much. Because I have a feeling that this is more like the standard move. But this is just like, it, I'm sort of guessing here because... Um, as I always say, I don't have AlphaGo at home to ask any questions to. So um, I'm just sort of guessing that um, maybe this is how mm. the other version of AlphaGo would play. And um, something like this might happen. And we can see White is heading sort of directly to the center. Uh, White, I expect White to play this extension on the right side. But again, White's not really making any territory on the right side. White is just sort of building influence toward the center of the board and hoping to make a moyo there. And so this is a balanced game. It looks pretty even. Black has territories in, in four areas of the board, but they're all fairly small. And that big shimari in the lower right corner, um, again, it's not really territory yet. Right. So there's there's a potential invasion for white there. So white's not really, white doesn't have to get too anxious about territory um, because black's territories are small too. Mm -hmm. But Black plays this attachment. Um, and interestingly, like um, in human games, this is a Joseki-like um, shape that would be played. Let's just go back a few moves. Sometimes um, in orthodox games, you see this kind of Joseki be playing a lot. So this is a Joseki. Uh, but the game starts with the um, shoulder hit slightly different. So, like, there's this extra exchange here of, um, let's just mark the two moves. There's an extra exchange of this move and this move, mm. um, which, uh, the, on one hand, this exchange is probably losing a bit of territory for white. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it is sort of creating some Aji of uh, follow-up moves. For instance, this move. Right. Or this is also a forcing move that white has. So there's some extra potential there that could be annoying for black. So um, there's a pro and a con to, to having this exchange on the board. It's sort of interesting to see that. 
And this is something that I was seeing, let's see, I, I forget where I saw it. I saw it in some part of some, some Zero game. I think that mm -hmm. this is something that Zero likes to do also. But in this case, we're seeing AG Lead playing it. So there's um, a strange connection there. And these two programs that um, are not really using the same uh, set of values because they, were, um, they evolved separately. But they, there's a kind of a similarity that I'm seeing here between Zero and uh, AG Lee, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to get into a philosophical thing, but we're, we're, we'll skip it. I think it's the, the fact that um, Master, um, and I guess AG Lee too, and Zero, they like to have this little Odzi there to, that mm -hmm. they can make good use of later. And they're very good at using it in the correct fashion. It's also that it's the, the the regular ones, which you were just showing, you know, I, I don't want to call them soft, but but this and this, this is maybe what you're saying, you know, that that they uh, this has a lot more follow up. It's it more volatile. Like, yeah. 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 And so that that's the way Zero likes to play. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 it's, yeah. and it's attractive. I mean, I have to say as a human player, it's attractive. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's not exactly fighting but it's more engaged right yeah so black plays this big move on the upper side this is a point where i would also consider playing at a mm. um but the upper side is big too so i, I i'd say they're both uh, equally big points and white answers white has to kick here to um, make a, a living shape in the upper side mm -hmm. and uh, white adds a stone here so this is right um this is a very ag lee type of move because white doesn't really need that move it's not um white's alive in the corner already but this is going to allow white to um push black around on the left side a little bit um, we're going to get to practice that smiggle problem there mm -hmm. and so we're going to see the life and death play out also white is threatening an invasion on the upper side and um this move is going to make a difference in how white can surround the center so it's a very um this kind of thick move i think i remember similar moves from the yeah. match against lisa at all Absolutely. On the, on the surface, it looks a bit <laughs> slow, but um, it's very typical of the, the AZ Lee version, I think. Mm -hmm. And Black chooses this point to cut, and White just answers naturally there. Um, and then Black switches back to the upper side. So um, this is just a purely territorial move. And um, it looks a bit tight actually it looks a bit mm -hmm. tight even but this is this move is sort of like the uh the trademark you might say it's the it's typical of this version of zero because it just loves to take territory Man. in a very simple it just maps it out very simply uh, and it doesn't do all that stuff inside white smoyo until the last minute so it's much right. more like the humans in the way it handles white smoyo like um the 40 block version of zero will be jumping in and then leaving that. And then it has all these dead stones hanging around in its opponent's moil. <laughs> and then they all come back to life later in the game. So it's very confusing the way it jumps around and sometimes jumps in and sometimes just leaves that. But uh, Zero is a bit, uh, this 20 block version of Zero seems to be a bit more straightforward in the way it just, at this point in the game, it's concentrating on taking territory. And then at a certain point, it starts invading. And here we get another, um, this looks almost like a, a shoulder hit because black is going to answer on the third line mm -hmm. and white hit. So this looks very um, reminiscent of the master series against humans where it was yes. playing shoulder hits and jumping a lot. Yeah. But we have to remember again, this is A.G. Lee. So maybe A.G. And a. G. Lee liked to, to play, had his own famous shoulder hit, um, but it didn't seem to be playing it as much as master. So maybe this is just by champ because we can see it does like this shape. Um, so maybe it doesn't have enough opportunities to play shoulder hits against Lee Sill because it does like this thing. And you were saying that this has shown up in a lot of pro games now too, right? Stuff like this. It's just that um, the master version of AlphaGo was so, it, it's still wildly popular. Like people are just copying it. And even among the pros, they don't really, some of them don't even really bother to understand it um, in the AlphaGo way. They, they're just... Um, starting with the alpha moves and just inventing the rest of it for their, for their, own, their own, in their own way. Right. Um, but it's it's just that the moves are so exciting um, just to start with. Mm -hmm. 
and they're relatively easy to play. Like there's, um, you're not going to get into trouble immediately by playing this kind of move. Right. Well, it makes that's defensive in the fight. Yeah, and and you know you've got that big sort of structure on the left for white. It it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. And so just to give you a variation. Oh yeah. So here I'm gonna I'm we're gonna get the first. Wait, is this is this game or variation? Uh, the game is where white played here. I, I just wanted to give um, let you see what might happen here. Yes, please. Um, just just to this is the key point in shape, and black answers here. So these are actually two key points, where with the point that white played is the more the more vital of the two points, you might say, and white uh, can play the slide here, and black um, the order of moves here is a bit tricky. And black is getting into Dame Zamari, a lack of liberty. Oh, man. Um, but black can play here. And you can see that uh, um, A and B are Mia is what I'm saying with the marking here. And you can see that this move is actually very useful uh, because when white pushes through here, it gives time for black to play here and, and white cannot cut on the second line. And otherwise, this would be a completely different, very, very confusing variation. But the fact that black can expand his eye space, uh, this is made possible by that triangle, that exchange there, the mm -hmm. triangle, the marked mm -hmm. exchange with the, it's, and, and, and this is just, it's enough space for black to be alive. So these last two moves, this move, which take, um, if black plays here, obviously it would be a two eye shape. And this move, which expands the, the space, um, they're interchangeable. So, for the time being, black is alive. Um, it could get into trouble later on, like if there was a white stone here, that would completely change what happens. It would be very bad for black. Um, and if these, uh, it's not very likely that these liberties are going to be filled, but they could change how it turns out also. Mm. Um, so there's all this stuff that could happen, but it turns out that for the time being, at least, black's perfectly okay. So white continues with this attachment. And I'm I'm sort of amused, very entertained to see um, AG Lee looking so much like uh, like the master version, mm -hmm. which we which we thought at least I thought that the master version was so far more advanced than AG Lee. It was just um, the 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 way it beat human players was so much more convincing mm. than uh, the game the match between Lee Sedol and AG Lee. Right. Um, but um, we can see that there's a lot of uh, points in the game where uh, the AG Lee version is uh, resembling the master version uh, to a great deal. Mm. So that was that was something that I got from this series. One of the big um, things that entertained me about this series is that I was seeing um, how AG Lee was actually on the way to becoming master, um, and there's some sim similarities in the moves it likes. So it's a little a little bit of a look, of a look under the hood in a sense. Yeah, not not quite as retarded as we thought it was when it creamed out, uh, at least at all. <laughs> okay. Nicely um, put. Nicely put. <laughs> and so white plays at A. This is a very important point, which is setting up a move at B later, which would control the right side, and also looking at the Aji at C, which is going to be a, a key, uh, a very turning point in the game. It's going to be. Um, one of White's main aims is to play at C and trash the corner later on. And it's going to be interesting how um, Zero han handles that. Um, which to name it is that Zero just sort of ignores that set. Um, so Black plays here. The, and so finally, um, after establishing that territory on the upper side, which is something like 30 points, and black has almost 10 points in the corner and more than five points on the left side. So um, if we add those three territories, it's something like 45 points. Mm -hmm. White has a few points in the upper left corner and um, probably more than 10 points on the left side. Although, yeah, well, we do have to worry about clamps sometimes, but usually it's not going to happen. So that's let's call that almost 15 points. And so 20 points on the left half of the board. And so white's something like 25 points behind. Mm. Um, so, uh, zero takes this time to start to reduce the center. And, it's, and I think it's good timing. Um, I think a strong human pro would be thinking of heading into the territory at this point. I mean, heading into to scrap white's center territory. Right. right. Um, the extra meaning for this move is this sort of 
loosely connecting to those marked stones on the left. It's not really trying to save them. Like, why well, could play, um, could cut those stones off and capture them. Um, so Black's not all that serious in saving them, but by sort of starting to save them or threatening to save them, Black is putting pressure on the white group at A. So this white group is not completely connected to the right side. So white's going to handle that with this move. And zero floats out into the center. Um, so we can see, um, this is where I see the 40 block version and this 20 block version sort of being different. Because the 40 block version usually has two or three dead groups inside the opponent's moyo, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, th this 20 block version keeps it relatively simple by just right. building one group and making a life for it. In a way that um, we can uh, we can think that we understand at least it's some it's a, a strategy that I recognize right. as something that should work for black when black is invading white's moyo. It's much more easy to under for me to sort of think I understand it when than when I'm looking at the forty black versions games. And so white here is threatening to invade at a. So this is a point where I'd be pretty worried about this corner. And I would want to be adding a move to it to make something like 15 points there and increase my territory to close to 60 points in all. That would be a, a lot of territory. And I would still have something like a 20 point lead in territory. And yeah. well, after that, I would just have to worry about the center group, which would, and let why me would guess, harass it. Black, black doesn't in ask. case. Exactly. Of course. Yeah, I was setting that up, of course. Nice. So, nice. And, and, the, and the point here is that curling here once it's going to change what happens in the corner. So this is actually, um, although it doesn't seem to be doing much, it's actually making a difference in what's going to happen in the corner next. And so black adds a stone to the center. And white continues to attack in the center, but let, let's take a look at this one. And what's going to happen here? Uh, black's actually going to let it live. Whoa. Uh, uh, but the point is that uh, there would um, this extra move here, uh, this extra stone here is giving black some extra liberties that make it bad for white to be trying to make more trouble for black. So so white's going to start by trying threatening to make a life, and threatening to cut here next. And if black tries to kill that, uh, white's going to get it. Let's, let's do that variation too. Yeah. So if white if black tries to kill that, even if white uh, cuts here now. It's not as if uh, it's it's a complete collapse for black. Like uh, black can play here, black's going to win the semi by one move. But you can see that this is giving white a lot of forcing moves on the side. It's going to change what happens in the center. Mm. So this kind of squeeze is actually pretty good for white. Um, it's what white should be aiming at because the corner territory is still not that. It's going to be less than 15 points or somewhere in the vicinity of 15 points. And getting the this extra forcing move here it makes a big difference. We're going to see that happen. It makes It's going to make a big difference to what happens in the center of the board. Mm -hmm. So just to give you that kind of a, a prequel uh, um, to what's going to happen later in the game, I'll show you what the version, the variation that I'm thinking of is Black's variation. Black um, playing B and C actually give Black more profit than White got by trashing the corner. And so black can continue like this. And white's actually not very strong on the right side. You can see I took this variation fairly far. Mm. Um, but um, white's group on the right side, and so these two marked white groups, mm. um, both of them are actually um, potentially eyeless. And especially yeah. that group on the right side, if black gets to play, uh, let's just mark one more space. If black gets to play here later on, uh, that white group is not, it's gonna have trouble making eyes. And so there's there's some uh, more trouble for white than um, black is getting because black is pretty safe there with that one group that uh, came out of the lower right corner, and because white is not so strong in the center, black's group in the center is going to be okay too. And you can see that all this fighting in the center is going to make the center um, a pretty dead area. It's going to be an empty area with no territory for white. So white is actually losing a lot of territory, a lot of potential territory in creating this running fight. And it's not worth it to um, erase the lower right corner. Mm. And it's very, it's sort of uh, counterintuitive because you would think that white be, would be getting 
uh, some potential by this, but actually, as we see in this shape here, um, why well, it's actually losing any potential territory in the, in the center of the board. Wow. So um, the point here is that white is sort of keeping this line secure will give white a lot more potential on the right side of the board and towards the center. So it's not a good idea for white to trash the corner immediately, which means that maybe it was good for black just to be playing away. And the dog's saying goodbye again. Hey, pup. Yeah. Yep. And so, uh, and so black counters with this and white encloses black and we can see that it sort of looks like white might be getting some territory um, in the center in the right side of the board. Yeah. And if white does it um, successfully, like if white is getting to, um, at the very least white's gonna be able to secure this line mm. because black is weak in the corner. So uh, finally white's gonna aim to be playing this point and to, to get a big, uh, big territory on the right side of the board. And that could lead to a close game. So the game is not necessarily bad for white at this point. But this move here, saving the two stones, saving these two stones, cutting stones. Again, this is going to um, change the strength of white's group on the lower side. And also black is starting to make eye space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so while making eye space here in the center of the board, black is changing the strength, uh, putting a bit of pressure on the, this mark group for white. And because of that, it's making it uh, less and less good for white to be trying to invade the lower right corner. So in a way, you could say that by saving these cutting stones, black is um, indirectly changing the lower right corner into a black territory, which means again that black has almost 60 points. And that's 60 a, points is a lot of territory for white to have to catch up to. That's a lot of territory. Because if we look at the left half of the board, white only has about 20 points in all. It's really hard to see where where white can make that up at this point. I mean, and black's territory is just so solid, and 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 black, I don't see where black has any trouble. Well, white is still trying to push black around here. Uh, black does not have yeah. a clear two eye shape, so black is going to push through here, and we can see zero is setting up a counterattack here, uh, very cleverly. This move is a neat move, um, making an eye there. Um, so let's mark the eye. Black is making an eye at this point, and or maybe this this these two points sort of. Yeah. So black's making an eye here. Uh, mostly it's this one point here. Um, so this is actually more um, efficient than just connecting here, in which case that eye would not be mm -hmm. mapped out yet. Mm -hmm. So black's make, making an eye at that point, and um, and setting up for the next black move, setting up a more a stronger move here. So black will be expanding the space here when black plays this move um, next. So it's black is preparing to play that move and make some space that's starting to look like almost two eyes. Mm -hmm. And so by playing here, black is sort of inducing white to play this counterattack. So black is inviting white to play this way, which looks like a pretty good move. It looks like black is in danger of getting cut off now mm -hmm. uh, just to set up this move. So black's not really worried about getting cut off at all. It's another case of AlphaGo not caring about it. And, <laughs> and you can see all these cutting points that I've marked, A, B, and C. Um, they're gonna be a lot of, they're, they're a headache for white. Right. And so white says, I'm gonna yeah, cut you now. I've been looking so, at that spot, that's, that's the spot. This um, move, it reduces black to one eye, one eye shape. So black all has right. only one eye at this point. All right. But strangely, enough, if white cuts at A, that's going to change into two eyes at least. <laughs> okay. it, it's like magic. It's a little magic trick. I'm so black starts with the cut magic. here, um, and black cuts in the center. So this is really, really a headache for white, because you can see that black territory on the side that black, black was so simply surrounding there, um, that black territory is um, being used as influence, because black is pushing white towards that black area on the upper side. Mm -hmm. And when white gets closer to that black area on the upper side, it's going to act as a wall because white's going to be slamming into that wall. And so these white stones, these three white stones in the center are actually not all that strong. White has to worry about these three stones now. Right. And so white extends here. It's not a ladder. Uh, it is a ladder, is it? Mm, yeah. No, it's not a ladder yet. 
Yeah, that, that would be bad if it was black. So black extends. And we can see black is setting up a, a trap here. Um, okay, first of all, let's have white cut. And what I meant when I said it turns into two eyes, in this case, it just turns into a capture for black. So we're, we're gonna show that. Um, it's good for black to start with this and make white into a clump of three stones and then cut. And now, now the two points are me out because white has to answer on this side to save that and black can capture three stones. That's why black started by putting it in, into a clump like that. Actually, that black is... not capture the three stones. Uh, I, should, I shouldn't say black could capture those three stones because they escaped just now. But black kills uh, black. That's... <sighs> and um, perhaps you remember that uh, a, a few minutes ago I was talking about white playing at B in the corner and squeezing black to get a forcing move at C. I remember. And it didn't quite work out because black allowed the corner to live, but um, that's part of the story where white would really like to have a forcing move at C and uh, use that to, to make this attack at A more successful. Right. So to get back to the game, that's sort of what white is going to try to do. White plays here once. So that's uh, this is sort of in connection to the fact that if white gets a stone at the mark point, then mm -hmm. the attack at A is going to be slightly right. more effective, but it's not going to be lethal. I'm, I'm probably going to have an opportunity later to talk about how it turns into two eyes when white has a better prepared position. So white plays here, and 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 this is again we're seeing the same same sequence here, um, and but white switches back to the center. So um, uh, I'm going to tell you what I think is happening here because right, it's please, because I'm a little confused. Um, I think we're, we're seeing uh, A.G. Lee getting into trouble here because um, it knows what it wants to do. And I think at this point it's calculated that it's not going to turn out that way. And so it, lo it ran out of good moves in the corner. So oh. I'm going to show you what White would like to do. White would like to play here. White would really like Black to try to kill this group. And so th we're going to get this variation. Um, so this is what White wants to do. And we have this shape. It's a very clever shape locally. Yep, yep, yep. Um, it, 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 it's a shape that you see in Sumerian problems where this is the key point. And it looks like black is about to be put in Atari. Um, let's see if I played that. No, I did probably didn't play that move. But um, even if white play, uh, plays that move, let's just put an extra period, then there's nothing white can do after that. So it's a very, very clever shape. And uh, this original move here, um, where black plays uh, uh, plays this placement on the first line. It's a very important move that avoids the possibility of a ko, and it also enables black to win the semi. -hike. Oh, sorry, um, this way. Um, so this mark move here is a tesuji that is worth remembering. It's worth remembering for any amateur player. Uh, but the point here is that white has used this fight um, to, to, to give white a, a good shape on the right with E. Um, so if black plays the hunted B to kill white, what I'm saying here is I'm, I've marked too many stones probably, but I'm saying it when white plays A, if black plays B to kill the group, uh, white can get the forcing move at C and also an extra move at E, so white gets to cut at D. Um, but the point, the other point I make here is that actually this doesn't kill black. Wow. Black uh, play this move and force with this move. And again, this is threatening to connect up to the center because white has this weakness here. Uh, white has this weakness with, with which white has to connect here at some point. Yeah, 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 so yeah. If white cuts that off, uh, then black can easily make a life in the, on, the, on the side. Nice. Um, but of course, this is this is okay for white. This is the variation that uh, would lead to an even game. Uh, white will be able, black escapes in the center. Uh, white will be able to capture the two stones here. And I'm talking about these two stones. These two right. stones are pretty right. much dead now. And black will probably just uh, secure the connection and then move to this final big move. But in this case, white has sort of squeezed the lower right corner. Let's see how far I went in this variation. I, it's going further than I expected. Okay, this far. And so we're gonna end, have an end game now, and it's gonna be a pretty close game. But I think in these variations where white has managed to squeeze black in the lower right corner, I'm sort of leaning towards a white win, but it's probably a very, very close game. It's probably right. a different so just uh, uh, so that was something close to 40 move variation there. Um, but let's get back to the game. In actual practice, if white does that, 
um, black is probably just going to allow white to live in the corner. Um, but that would be an interesting variation too, because um, the whole fight in the center of the board has changed now. So when black does that and white does that, it's a bit more complicated for black too, because white's still threatening to cut black off in the center and there's all this confusion in the center. So again, this is the variation that I would play with white and I would be hoping for, for this kind of thing to happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to say that that's how I would play with white. I would continue playing here. But um, I think AlphaGo, uh, A.G. Lee was afraid of this variation maybe. Um, and it decided that it wasn't working out well. So it could be a, 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 a case of um, A.G. Lee just sort of giving up on this variation because mm. it didn't but there's a lot of potential for white in this variation, actually. Right? Like this is a point where white could be playing a move here and then threatening the cut in the center, um, and also threatening the connection underneath here. So um, this would this would be putting more pr pressure on black in the center of the board. Um, because as I've been saying for a while here, th this point here is very crucial in white making an attack on black on the left in the center of the board. So it's very important for white to be having this this stone here. Huh. So there's a lot, of, a lot of potential for white in this variation, but somehow AZ Lee didn't like it. Wow. So it goes back to the center. Um, and black cuts here and extends. And this looks really bad for white because these two blocks mm. are three stones. Um, black has already captured one of them. Right. Uh, only it's bad for black to capture them. <laughs> <laughs> you tricked me. It, Black's already captured them. I, I made a variation to show. Um, Black can play here. Um, and with these two forcing moves, Black can capture these three stones. So it looks really bad, but now this Black group in the center of the board is dead. Oh, or, right, uh, right, 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 right. Because Black so has no forcing moves. Um, the, the two marked moves that Black played have taken away all of Black's forcing moves. And so Black is just dead. Black needed that forcing move at C to make a living shape. So that's why black doesn't go through with the capture here, but instead plays this move, which is threatening a slightly different squeeze. Like if white, um, if white plays here, for instance, then black can get uh, this kind of a squeeze, which is slightly better for black. Like something like this would give black, um, and, and in this case, black, there's no need for black to play this forcing move. And so black can use the forcing move um, from this side, might not play it immediately, but um, this would be much more efficient. In this case, black would be connecting, connected up, um, so there's no cutting point here anymore. Uh, this cutting point just doesn't work. And, um, and black is connecting up to the upper side with some potential for these two stones also. Mm -hmm. So this would mm -hmm. probably be a winning variation for black. So this is what black is sort of threatening to do, and white extends here. Again, white is saying just go ahead and take those stones in the center because white can cut at A and kill black in the lower left. Ow, 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 ow. So black's not gonna let that happen. So again, black is um, sort of pretending to be connected, but not really connected. Yeah, that's, but the point doesn't... is, it doesn't matter because black can make a lot. Oh, line. because make the second eye, okay, yeah. right, right, right. And so it's not a big deal. Okay. And so uh, white plays here. Um, and now black is pretty much connected up to the upper side. That's a nice sequence. It's a nice sequence. And so now white goes after the um, lower right corner. But this was not so good because you might notice everything, all the fighting in the center has cleared up. Right. It's simplified. Right, everything's settled. That, yeah. That, uh, when black does this, the game move, it's um, all black has to worry about is this one group. Right. And we're going to see how that happens. But so, first I'll show you what uh, what A.G. Lee wish might happen. So this is the <laughs> wish variation for A.G. Lee. Um, and again, we're going to see black capturing white in the corner. But in this case, uh, we can see that black has extended his liberties on the lower side with this. Wow. Group. Wow. Uh, so white's not going to squeeze from that side anymore. But white will have some squeezing potential from this side. It's a big side now. So this is really working well to squeeze black in the corner, and it's still something like 15 points only. So black's corner has not expanded, um, but white has 
is going to have some extra potential on the right side. So this is not so bad for white. Let's see how far I went with this variation. So this is just the end game sequence here. Oh, I took it this far. It's still a close game. Mm -hmm. So this is mm -hmm. what AZ Lee Wist might happen. Um, but as I said before, going back, uh, let's, let's just try to go back to uh, this point maybe. Um, at this point in the game, um, this is where I think White had to do it right now when there was so much uncertainty in the center mm -hmm, of the board mm -hmm. and more opportunities for White to try to kill one of those center black groups. Because um, in the game, uh, when White does this, um, everything in the center is cleared up. There's no danger for black. Black's all connected up to the upper side. And so there's no weak black group. And so we're going to see, so like if black had taken the corner, it, um, it would have been a close game. But we're going to see this develop into a win for black. And so it's, um, again, it's a position where um, even a top pro would be sort of hesitate to allow white to live in the corner because that's a 20 point difference when compared to black capturing those stuff. Yeah, it's totally black, counterintuitive. Totally. Yeah. And there's the fact that black's group is not completely alive yet. Well, there, yes. <laughs> but it's, it's actually not so dangerous because black does have a potential eye on the lower side. And it's not going to have much trouble. It has a it sort of has a potential eye on the right side too. I, I so, yeah. I, I, and I white's actually feel that, good. but yeah. And the point is that all this whole area on the right half of the board was supposed to be a, a white territory. Like it right. looked like it could develop into a territory of about forty points, maybe, um, maybe a, a, a kind of a thin forty points. So maybe a little less than forty points. But if white got that into that squeezing variation. It's going to look, let's just go to the end of that variation once more. It looks like it's going to be in the vicinity. Yeah, it, of it's, a nice, it's, a, it's a very nice territory for white. Yeah, well, it's more than 35 points anyway. Yeah, yeah. And so, so there's a big difference here. And this territory is just going to disappear. So it's just trash. It's completely just... So giving the cast of 20 points in the corner, black is going to get something in return. And here we see the telltale signs of, um, you know, A.G. Lee sort of going berserk a little bit. This, this move in itself is not so bad, um, but it's premature, of course. Um, eventually, it's going to be forcing, but maybe not right now. And uh, so White plays this exchange, which is not really doing very much either. And, um, and again, uh, this exchange, it's OK to play it, but it's not really gaining anything. It might even be losing a couple of points. Is this is this uh, is this uh, AJ AJ Lee thinking it's won the game? It's AJ Lee thinking it's lost the game. So it's it's reminding me of game number four against. Lisa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where it's just right. Okay, I get it. Okay. And so it's it's sort of going berserk here, and playing moves that are clearly bad. There was a point in game four of the Lisa Doll match where it was mm -hmm. playing a number of moves mm -hmm. that were very strange. But the interesting thing about AlphaGo is that like any other uh, Go playing robot, if it goes berserk once, it's going to go berserk until it dies, like it's going to kill itself. But AlphaGo, um, the, even the AZ Lee version, which is admittedly weaker than uh, Master or Zero, of course, even though it goes berserk for a little bit, then it recovers and it starts playing normal moves again. Mm. And so it, it doesn't completely lose it. Like in that game against um, Lisa at all. Um, it kept kept on playing fairly reasonable moves for a while, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so it, it was. It, it even had potential to get a close game, so it, it wasn't completely um, going wrong. And so, in this, this fight here in the center is actually a fight where um, I would still be maybe a bit nervous and at least very um, trying to concentrate on the reading because there's um, it like still does not have um, two eyes. Yeah. And doesn't really have a, an established connection to the upper side. So how is Black going to survive here? It's I've been looking at this for a while because it looks scary to me. I mean, I take I, I'm totally confident that it's it's going to be okay, but I don't quite see how it. Well, White has problems on both sides. So one of the problems is the fact that these two stones are coming into play now, mm -hmm. and so White has to finish off those two stones. The other problem is that Black can push through and cut here. <laughs> right. And so to show that, there's actually a variation I put in. So let's let's take a look at that. Uh, the game move was white played here, mm 
just mm-hmm. straightforwardly going after the two stones. So white's killing the two black stones, but it's not really the strongest move to attack black on the right side. So let's say white tries to cl- enclose black. Here. Right. Yeah, that's. So this is where white's going to get into big mm-hmm. trouble when black pushes through and cuts here, has an Atari um, to the right of A. So so um, if black captures this white stone at A, of course it's going to be bad. And so there's no good way um, for black for white to go after those two stones. And these two stones, of course, cut off all white stones in the lower on the, on the on the right side. So uh, this is already bad trouble for white with that potential Atari I just marked. This one that I'm going to take off the board now. Um, so that's with the jeopardy of that stone at A, and this stuff that's happening on the right side combined to make this just really bad for white. Hmm. And like, there's too much stuff. Like, just I could add a few moves. I like white could play uh, stuff like this to go after the cutting stone here, um, but white doesn't have time to do that and play on the right side too. Like, white still has to play this move, and so that means that black's going to play here. And now we're going to see white's connection in the center falling apart. Like, white needs another stone here, and black's just cutting off white on the lower side. So there's too much danger on all sides for white. Wow. to actually close black. So in the game, white uh, plays here. This is just not um, okay. So zero is getting nasty here. Zero's, now zero is taking white's eyes away before cutting white off. So this is already, it's a bad, it's a, it's a finished position. It's, the game's over. So yeah, quickly, it's just, it's, yeah, like, yeah. At, at this point, at this point we were thinking um, a player would be still worried. Most players would be worried with black. Um, like in a fast game, in a blitz game against an amateur, I could probably kill black most of the time. Absolutely. I could play with white and kill black most of the time, just because um, black might not, an, an amateur player might not know what to do exactly. Right. And I, I, I'm probably being sort of um, escaping from the fact that maybe I would make the mistake too if I was playing with black. So um, maybe not even an amateur player. But the point is that black is the one who should be in trouble one way or the other. You, you sort of think that black should be in trouble, but white has so much bad Ozzy on all sides, it, it's just not working yeah. for white. Wow. Um, so to continue the game, again, we're going to see uh, Matt, uh, A.G. Lee playing some some stupid moves, but, you know, uh, it's the same loss anyway. All of this stuff is pretty meaningless. Losing points. Um, accomplishing nothing. Um, but it's just declaring the fact that white's losing anyway. And so... <laughs> At this point, um, AG uh, Zero is, is get, sort of gets fed up with it and says, <laughs> go ahead and take those stones from the center. It's something like 20 points. But the whole whole right side is going to be Black's territory here. And the crazy thing about this game is that it's going to be pretty close. Wow. Uh, because Zero wow. doesn't go ahead and take the entire advantage. Zero just continues in the center here. Black has sacrificed... Um, Let's see, that's uh, eight stones. Probably there's some extra stones outside that. So it's about 10 stones in the center, giving white about 20 points to finish off white on the side. So this was a profit for black. Um, black should be winning by a huge amount now. Yeah. We're going to see uh, zero give something back. Um, the, white, the right side is dead even when black plays this way. Um, not really playing the optimal moves, but it's dead. Um, and the upper side is not going to accomplish anything for white. Only zero, at this point, zero just takes the center, which is relatively small. And it's going to allow white to play at A and capture the whole upper side. It's just playing around there. And it has the whole thing calculated. And you see, yeah, it simplifies the game a lot. Like, if I could calculate that I was winning, um, by even by a small margin, if I could completely calculate that as well right. as zero does, then maybe I would be happy to play this move because it does um, get rid of a lot of the uncertainty that was uh, happening on the right side. It simplifies the fight here because black can actually just make eyes. It's very simple. Uh, and white will get the upper side. Um, and what's so funny about this is that if, if white had not been playing all of those bad moves before, uh, maybe this would have been in question, the result of the game. But uh, all of these bad moves that White played when White knew it was losing have made this a winning variation for Black. And we're, we're seeing um, 
A.G. Lee sort of suiciding at this point of the game. Oh, man. Because there's a lot of bad stuff. Well, Zero's, Zero is interesting, too. It plays this forcing move for no reason before answering White's forcing move. So it's, it's playing around a bit. Finally, White kills the upper side with this move. And there's all sorts yeah, of sure. stuff Black could do. Like yeah. Black, could, Black could have played here. And this is bad for White, too. And so this is just some crazy stuff that White was doing to make things worse. Um, but Zero just um, plays this move, which is not necessary. Um, and and it's turning into an endgame. So Black's going to win by a small margin. <laughs> What's the margin? I think it was uh, something like one and a half points. Um, it's pretty close, actually. But, you know, that's a safe win for... Oh, they fin- more or less, they've, they've almost finished the game. I think it was one and a half points. So just to refresh ourselves, I mean, this is AlphaGo Lee, which, of course, is, a, you know, the, the program that beat Lisa Dahlb against Zero, which... this And this is early in, in the... Earlier in the uh, Zero development, Right. This is oh early... no! It's it's finished already. I think it's finished already. Really? We have to we have to check that, but I think it's after the the uh, self played training room. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Still impressive. It's very impressive, um, and actually, um, the way that I I, I was uh, impressed by Ag Lee also, like the way it, it it's pretty much hanging in the game in this game. Yeah. Um, so there, I think uh, I, I, I'm showing a, um, this point in the game where White played the Kosumi and Black ignored it by playing on the outside. I think that the timing of this um, this attempt to live in the corner was crucial. Like White had to play it earlier at the earlier point that I was showing, in which case there would be more uncertainty. And at least as far as I'm concerned, I would feel that White would have more potential to, mm-hmm. to get something out of this mm-hmm. when Black played this move and allowed White to live. Um, and because this, um, having black kill the corner is actually what white wants. White wants to be killed in this corner so white can squeeze from the outside and this is going to be a pretty close game. So it's a very interesting position where white wants to die in the corner here, but black's not going to do that for white. Black actually allows white to live, um, creating what looks like a weak black group, but actually, um, it's going to turn into a winning position for black. So I think it's it's uh, it's interesting for you know as we as we look at uh, you know move into the the zero games, um, which of course as we know get you know otherworldly fairly mm-hmm. quickly. And and as I think you know you pointed out in this game, this is not this is not there yet. This is still you know fairly understandable as as you put it, right? It's fairly understandable. Um, I think that the 20 blocks refers to the, the depth of the neural network, so it's the, the size, you might say. Mm. And so it's the amount, the amount of uh, studying of the game that they're doing, the number of variations, maybe, you might say, uh, that they're looking at. And so it, it might have a um, tendency to simplify the game um, as far as humans are concerned. So that's, mm-hmm. that's something that, um, if I'm wrong, people could probably correct me in the comments, but that, that's the thing. They, they will. Yeah. And so that's um, something interesting about Zero, that in the way it likes to take territory and then invade the opponent's moyo, it's very similar to the 40-block version. But the way it actually executes that is in a fashion that um, looks like something that a human player um, should be able to do also. Mm -hmm. So it's it's something that I find um, I I like better. I I like this Zero better than the 40-block version Zero because it's not quite so alien to me. Well, and I feel that I could copy what it does. Right, right. I mean, I, we've we've I think we've just done not that many of the uh, of the later zero games where where I remember it, where you just you have a hard time uh, mm-hmm. trying to trying to sort of deconstruct it and and uh, you know get into the black box. But this this one and this is fun. You know, it's it's a mm-hmm. very elegant sequences and as always, you know, you've you know, really. You know, you're always apologizing for going into the variations, but from what I can tell, uh, this is what folks love. Um, you know, well, that's what I like to do too. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and and I think that's a very um, in in these games, like I, I get the feeling that Ag Lee b- being challenged by um, mm-hmm. Zero like this, mm-hmm. it, it's it it changes the way that Ag Lee plays also. So it's it's playing a slightly different game than it was playing against Lee at all. 
just right, because right. Um, it, it's having more trouble. It's, it's it's trying to find, and so in doing that, in playing the more dangerous sequences or being forced to be playing the more dangerous sequences, it's it's looking in some ways a bit more like master, mm-hmm. more like the master version, which is of course um, a relative of A. G. Lee, but a more advanced version. Right. And so I, I find it very interesting to see those similarities. Well, and we find it interesting to uh, to see what you discover and dig out. So once again, thanks for doing that. I'm sure we'll get lots of comments. And of course, folks, uh, keep those coming. We like to see your comments and uh, respond as we can. So thank you, as always, Michael. And, uh, and again, to everybody, big, big thanks to all of our AGA members. We appreciate your support. And they're the ones who make videos like this possible. Uh, if you'd like to support this content as well, and uh, we really hope you do, uh, please consider joining the American Go Association at usgo.org. And we'll see you all next week.